Risa Floor supports the three fundamental types of diaphragms used in structural analysis, rigid, semi-rigid, and flexible. The type of diaphragm that should be used in analysis is a function of the material and the geometry of the building. Oftentimes there are instances where different types of diaphragms occur within the same building. It is therefore important to consider the influence that this has on the lateral load distribution. In this model here, I have a simple multi-story steel structure. I'm gonna demonstrate for us today how to model different diaphragm types within that same model. Okay, so here in this model, um, we've got, we're on level three right now. We've got a total of three floors and I can go ahead and take us into that full model view here. Um, and so we can see the third level has kind of a, a dip Part of the diaphragm is missing. There's a little break in the diaphragm. So we've got a little bit of unique geometry going on at the different levels. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on floor plan one here. So for this floor plan, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draw a diaphragm. So the first thing we'll wanna activate that graphic editing toolbar there. And I am going to choose this option to create or modify diaphragm slab perimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. For this first floor diaphragm here, we're gonna just assign it a standard rigid diaphragm. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the edge overhang distance at about 12 inches. And from this diaphragm type drop down menu, this is where we have the option to choose those three different diaphragm types. So for this instance, we're gonna go ahead and go with the rigid option. And then uh, choose this radio button to create the diaphragm edge. The alternative would be when we wanna create an opening. Uh, for now, we just need to go ahead and create the diaphragm edge. And I'm going to go ahead and have the program consider all the selected beams and walls for the diaphragm. Go ahead and apply this. And as you can see, a purple line kind of was generated around the boundary of my structure element, indicating the diaphragm that was assigned. If we come over to our diaphragm spreadsheet, we'll see a summary of that diaphragm occurring here. If you needed to change the diaphragm type from within the spreadsheet later on, you have that option to do it right here as well. All right, so that's a rigid diaphragm. Let's go ahead and jump up to floor plan two. In this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate a semi-rigid diaphragm. So it's very similar. You'll go ahead and select the create modify slab perimeters. And we're gonna keep that same 12 inch overhang, but this time I'm going to choose the semi-rigid option. Here is where we're gonna actually need to specify the material and the thickness. So this is gonna determine the stiffness of that diaphragm that's gonna be used in the analysis for lateral distribution. So we'll go ahead and stick with the generic uh, 3000 normal weight concrete, but this thickness is gonna be more around seven and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that seven and a half right there. And then again, I'm gonna choose the consider all selected beams and walls for the diaphragm option. So I'll go ahead and apply that. And now this instance, we see it's more of a teal line surrounding the border. So of the three different types of diaphragms, you'll actually see uh, they're, they'll populate in three different colors indicating the different diaphragm types. All right, and so let's go ahead and hop into floor plan three here is floor plan three. Here's where we have kind of a break in our structure here. And in this instance, I'm gonna demonstrate, uh, we're gonna do a couple different diaphragms within this same floor plan. So again, I'll just come up to my diaphragm edge icon. And in this instance, maybe let's go with a flexible. So let's choose the flexible diaphragm option here. And since I've got two separate roof structures, uh, I'm gonna wanna choose the box, the beams, and walls to be considered for the diaphragm. So I'm gonna manually choose this. And then I'm also gonna choose to keep this dialog open because I'm gonna need to draw another diaphragm once I'm finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose apply. And then I'm just gonna box all of these beams and that's gonna be considered for my flexible diaphragm. So you can see the flexible diaphragm here is indicated by that darker orange boundary line there. And then maybe we'll go ahead and just choose a more rigid diaphragm for this lower uh, roof structure here on our plan. And then there you can see you've got the orange and the purple indicating the flexible and rigid respectively. There you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. So we can see a summary again of our diaphragms here within the diaphragm spreadsheet. 
When you've got a semi-rigid diaphragm applied, you can see a summary of the material assigned and thickness, and you always have the option to come in here and modify those as needed. I should note uh, that within Risa Floor, we're only specifying the material and the properties of the diaphragm. So once a model is integrated with Risa 3D, only then will the lateral loads be generated and distributed to those vertical uh, resisting elements. So let's go ahead and quickly solve our model here. I want to just quickly gen, uh, demonstrate for us uh, integrating with Risa 3D and how those lateral loads are going to be generated. So I'll just come up to use my director option here and I'm going to select Risa 3D. Go ahead and save our model file there. So here is where we'll input all of our values to generate the load, our wind loads for our structure. If I scroll down here, we'll see that the loads have been generated for the four different diaphragms. Remember, I have three floor plans, but I've got two diaphragms on my level three. So we can see a summary of the width and length of my diaphragms that have been assumed here uh, or that have been calculated here. So I'll go ahead and choose OK for my wind loads. And then similarly for the seismic loads, we've got forces applied at each diaphragm. And so you can see a summary of those forces calculated right there. So I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. So then we're going to go ahead and go into Risa 3D here. And I just want to demonstrate how we can view uh, and see how the load is being applied to each of these different diaphragms within the structure. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to choose uh, to display the diaphragms here. So we can see those same colors came across on our diaphragms, staying consistent with what we saw in Risa Floor. You can see we've got some additional nodes that have been generated here. The nodes are going to only be generated for the rigid and flexible diaphragms, uh, and that's because the lateral load is applied differently to the semi-rigid diaphragm. I'm going to actually come over here, uh, and I'm going to choose to turn off my project grid so we can see this a little bit better. Let's go ahead and view our applied loads that we just generated. So I'm going to switch down to, let's take a look at that wind load X. So we can see the wind load in the X direction has been applied at the uh, generated nodes for the flexible and rigid diaphragms. And if I want to see the load that has been generated for my semi-rigid diaphragms, I'll just have to scroll down to that basic load case. And that's going to be indicated by the semi-rigid wind load in that positive X. And so I can see it's distributed directly to the diaphragm edge here on my semi-rigid diaphragm. So it is important to note that if you've got a combination of diaphragms within your model, that you're going to want to include both of those basic load cases within that same load combination so that you're getting all of the wind load applied to all of the diaphragms at that same time. So it's important to consider uh, the basic load case for the semi-rigid diaphragm as well as the basic load case for the flexible and rigid diaphragms within that same load combination. That is a summary of how you can assign multiple types of diaphragms within the same building model. For more information, visit Risa.com.